invite you to bow with me as we pray. Oh, holy God, may your spirit move among us this day. Through this season of Lent. To stir us up. To help us identify those places in our lives that need change. So that we might grow into the fullness of your kingdom. Work on us this day, O oh God. Move us forward. Grant us the courage to change. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Well, this is the season of Lent, and it's a time for each one of us to make an inventory of our own lives. It's time for us as a church to take an account of where we are. It's a time to consider that very thing that we find hard to consider most of the time, and that is change. So we have to face a question. What are the changes that God is calling us to during this season of Lent that move us forward to a fuller embrace of the new life that is ours in Christ Jesus, that new life that we celebrate on Easter Sunday. And once we get clear about some of those areas of change, there is another question. Are we ready for a change? Are we ready for a change? Well, today's scripture reading really engages us in a parable that is intended to change us it's intended to shake us up and reorient our lives toward the reign of God. The story is found in the 14th chapter of Luke's Gospel. Jesus is in the house of a very prominent Pharisee. He's there for a Sabbath dinner. Jesus has just encouraged the host of the dinner to revise his guest list the next time he throws a party to include the poor, the crippled, the lame, and the blind. Jesus wants the host to invite those folks the next time around rather than his friends, his family members, and his rich neighbors. So this brings us to this morning's text. Luke 14, verses 15 through 24. I invite you to listen for the word of God. One of the dinner guests on hearing this said to him, meaning Jesus, blessed is anyone who will eat bread in the kingdom of God. Then Jesus said to him, someone gave a great dinner and invited many. At the time of the dinner, he sent his slave to say to those who had been invited, Come, for everything is ready now. But they all alike began to make excuses. The first said to him, I bought a piece of land, and I must go out and see it. Please accept my regrets. Another said, I have bought five yoke of oxen. And I'm going to try them out. Please accept my regrets. Another said, I have just been married, and therefore I cannot come. So the slave returned and reported this to his master. Then the owner of the house became angry and said to his slave, Go out at once into the streets and lanes of the town and bring in the poor, the crippled, the blind, and the lame. And the slave said, Sir, what you ordered has been done, and there is still room. Then the master said to the slave, Go out into the roads and lanes and compel people to come in so that my house 
taste my dinner. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Well, my brothers and sisters, I don't know how this parable strikes you, but it challenges me. It challenges me because it reminds me of the choices that I've made in my life that have kept me from a wholehearted acceptance of God's invitation to participate in the great feast. That is finally a metaphor for the kingdom of God. Now, please don't misunderstand. I long for that full acceptance of the invitation. I concur completely with the conclusion of the dinner guest at the beginning of this story. Blessed is anyone who will eat in the kingdom of God. It is a blessing to eat in the kingdom of God. And I desire that blessing for myself. I long to eat this bread. I yearn to let God rule in my life fully and completely. In fact, when I first received my invitation to this great banquet a long time ago, I said yes. I said yes on a Sunday morning in 1963 when I professed my faith in Christ before the congregation of First Methodist Church in Beeville, Texas, my hometown. It was the day of my confirmation. I said yes to the invitation. But since then, I confess to you that I've become aware of this part of me that resists the reign of God in my life. Because you see, in a lot of ways, I haven't shown up at the banquet. And I've made excuses to rationalize my failure to appear. Interestingly enough, this is exactly how it was with those first guests invited to the banquet in the parable. They initially said yes to the invitation. Because you see, in first century Palestine, when a host made a feast, the date was announced long beforehand. The invitation was sent out and people said yes or no at that point. But what was missing in the initial invitation was the specific time of the dinner. That was not announced until all of the preparations for the meal were completed. Only then was a servant sent out to summon the guest to the party. Guest who had already agreed to attend. And we need to understand that to renege on the invitation at this point in the process was considered a grave insult to the host. Well, this is what happened in the story that Jesus told. Having accepted the invitations when they were first offered, the invited guest bailed out at the last minute. Other choices took precedence. And so excuses 
speeches and their insults. Take the landowner. He was more interested in looking after his property interests than he was in honoring his commitment to the host of the banquet. He offered a lame excuse to justify his absence. Who would buy land without first seeing it? Doesn't make sense. It would be like buying a house sight unseen just because we like the sound of the description in the newspaper ad. It was a lame excuse and an insult. The buyer of the oxen did the same thing. He put his business interest ahead of his commitment to the host of the banquet. He offered a lame excuse. Who in the world would buy five yoke of oxen without trying them out first? It would be like buying a used car without first having a mechanic thoroughly check it over. It was a lame excuse and an insult. 